Hello everyone, my name is Sik and today I'll be doing um, a request video. So one of the requests that I've been sent for after I did the Arma Eden tutorial series was for an animated briefing that basically starts with the black borders on the top and the bottom of the screen. This request was put forward to me by Simro1970, so shout out to you. This video is for you, hopefully this is useful to you. So. To properly showcase this, I'm going to have to jump into the um, into the init.sqf because I haven't actually used any triggers. I've only set up the the officer that's going to do the briefing, a little table with a laptop and the player character, and um, everything else is basically going on behind the scenes. I decided not to use any triggers for the chat in this case because you can also choose to do it through the init.sqf, and it actually, in this case, it works out a little bit better that way because I want this I want the screen to start black and if I try to do that through a trigger it will work but there will be like a second or half a second delay where the player can see something then the then the screen cuts to black and it just looks really weird but if you do it in the init.sqf the, there will be no delay it will be instant the mission will start in black right away it looks a whole lot better and to keep things simple to keep to be able to keep an overview of the situation basically it's better to have the um, the chat texts and stuff like that also in the init.sqf because otherwise you're going to have to jump into the init.sqf change some things then you have to check all the triggers and have to change the timings there and it, you have to go back and forth a whole lot and it's just really annoying whereas if you try to do everything for the init.sqf everything is right there top to bottom you can see everything inside that one file and it's a lot more useful so let's uh, jump into that and hopefully things will become a lot clearer all right so I'm inside of my init.sqf these are all the basic lines that you need for the very short introduction that I'm going to show you later on that one doesn't belong there all right so I'll go through one of the all of these lines one by one and explain to you what they are and then I'm going to show you what it looks like in-game. So, the cut text at the bottom there, this is what makes sure that the game starts in a completely black screen. Okay? The one below calls for the cinematic borders to be displayed. You'll see this one at the bottom of the list here as well. But basically, this one makes sure that you have a black screen at the bottom and at the top of the screen. Right? Then A1 play move. A1 is the name of my officer. And I want him to play move, uh, which is basically to start the animation, which is designated by this um, bit of code there. There's a lot of different briefing animations, but this is the one I chose for the, for my example. Then sleep uh, basically makes everything below this uh, sleep command wait for five seconds before starting with title cut, which is the, the fading in animation where you can actually see the, the game world. Okay, so with this, the the black screen slowly fades out, and the player can see the world again. And at the same time, I want the player to switch move into the hub spectator walk because I start or the player starts at one side of the building and he's pretty far away from the officer doing the briefing. So I want him to be closer, and in this case, I want him to walk forward a little bit. There is one um, small thing that I need to mention about this animation as well, because this animation goes on forever. If you do not call for this animation to be interrupted a bit later down into the script, and I'll come to that a bit, little bit later, the player character will just continue to walk, and he'll walk into a wall, and he just he's just going to walk into it endlessly, basically. Okay, but somewhere or down here below at the player play move now. I call for the default idle animation and that's basically it interrupts the hub spectator walk and cancels it all right but that happens after approximately five seconds because I call for another sleep command here so it's going to wait one second after the title cut starts and the player switches move his move into hub spectator walk so after that one second wait the officer is going to side chat and say ah my friend then there's going to be another wait of four seconds before he says how are you and the player will be interrupted interrupting his um, walking animation All right. another thing to mention is that both of these commands between the sleep uh, commands 
they will be played at the same time right and the same thing goes for um, these two right here because they're in between two sleep commands these happen simultaneously but then the other ones you know they are interrupted by the sleep commands basically um, so yeah after four seconds of waiting the player will say I'm well thanks there will be another wait of five seconds and then the cinematic border will be turned off by this command down here and the only difference between the turning it on and off is uh, to turn it off it's 1 1 and to turn it on it's 0 0 okay and then finally after the cinematic border is turned off the officer switch moves into an idle animation as well because the one thing with um, the, anima the briefing animation that the officer is going to be playing is that it is not interruptible by death so if you shoot him he will actually die but he will also remain standing upright and it looks very strange especially if you want the, the base to be attacked later on and where this character might die or something like that so you need to interrupt it by using the switch move to the default idle animation Right, that's about all you need for the basic introduction uh, or in-game briefing that I'm going to show you next. Alright, we're in-game again, so I'm just going to play the scenario and you'll see what I just did with the, with the scripts that I'm running in the init.sqf. So the screen stays black for a while. It's going to slowly fade out, but the cinematic borders are going to stay. You can look around, but I cannot actually move the character. And as you can see in the bottom left, the text messages are already displaying. Captain Rodriguez is saying, Ah, my friend, how are you? I'm saying, I'm well, thanks. Then the cinematic board is cut off. The player gets the controls back. He goes out of his briefing animation, and I'm free to roam around in the game world. Right? And this is also because the, the, the briefing animation was in, made in such a way that if you kill someone he's gonna stay upright in that briefing animation he's not actually gonna fall down but now that he switched back to this animation I can actually shoot him again like that <laughs> All right. Uh, another thing I want to show you is if you want to see a whole list of animations in the game you can once you're in game in the editor you can press escape and there's um, a camera no sorry the animations button and if you press that it's going to load up basically an animation displayer so these are all the idle animations and stuff like the reload animations and all that kind of stuff and there's a whole lot of different ones that you can find but for the cutscenes there is a special section called cutscene and if you press this you get all the like briefing animations walk a little bit of walking animations Let's see, some animations start off to the side, so this is the abuser, abusing, so this, or this guy is being abused, and then the other guy is like pushing the, the, the prisoner and all that kind of stuff. And there's a whole lot of animations that you can run. And some actually come with a, like a, a start, a loop version, and an end of that, like heli cargo talking, it's like people are talking, this one is an endless loop, and then this would finish the animation. And there's a lot of these that, that basically, um, maybe this one will be a better example. Yeah, so this is listening to the radio, it's the start of the animation. And this one is the loop, this one goes on forever, and then once you want, it, want the animation to cut out, you can pre press this, and it will be a smooth transition between those three states, basically. Alright, let's uh, jump back into the editor. And I think the last thing I want to show you is another place where you can find animations, which is through this, mm, yeah, tools and functions viewer. There's also ambient animation for combat and other ambient animations. And so, for example, these are just ambient animations. And this is a list of the thi different things you can run. They do require a different kind of code to be... Um, to call them in the init.skf. In this case, if I want to use one of these animations, I have to use this command instead of the just the simple play move and switch move that I was using in init.sqf. So that's something you'll have to tinker around with and it's something that's specific to different animations as well. So 
Another cool thing though is the ambient anim combat commands and these ones are actually interruptible by combat so you can use these to use them for enemy soldiers in a, like an encampment and they will sit and kneel on the ground and lean against a wall or something like that but as soon as they see you, the enemy, they will interrupt them and they will start to engage you. That is actually quite cool. But maybe that will be better served for a different video because uh, there's so many things you you could um, talk about in the Arma Eden editor. Also, a lot of different ways to do things. So it's always um, this is my way of doing it. Somebody else might find a completely different way of doing things. But yeah, this I always have like my specific set of things that I know work, and that's what I try to stick to. And then I don't really look at too many other things because you know don't fix what isn't broken. But uh. Yeah, anyway, I hope this video was useful to you. If you have any more questions, please let me know, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can.